So, I'm about a month late making this video. My bad. It's occurred to me that I haven't been starting these videos uh, properly for somebody on YouTube. I just kind of launch into things like everybody knows who I am and what I've been doing. So I guess I should introduce myself. I'm a computer science student at WGU with a goal to finish an entire computer science degree within one six month term. It's uh, a little past 4 a.m. right now. Today is September 4th. As of August 31st, the six months of my first term ended. I did not finish the entire degree. However, because the only course that I had left was the capstone, I met the requirements to have this 30-day term extension granted. So, I do still have 26 days to finish my capstone project and get this degree finished in one single term. So, doing all right so far. I finished 79 credit units in the last six months, and I've got four to go. Capstone is four. Anyway, let's back up. When I made my July 4th video, that was the last one that I posted, I had just submit my Data Structures and Algorithms 2 project, sort of a variant on what's known as the traveling salesman problem. When I submit the project, I was concerned that it might not actually pass because the 20 some odd page paper that I submit with it included a, a lot more detail than was actually necessary to explain my algorithms, particularly the complexity because of some strange little conditions that were built into the program that you can go watch the other video if you'd like to take a look at that. And maybe I can link it up here somewhere. I did get notice back that I passed that class shortly after I published that video. A week or two later, I, uh, I got an email saying that I was being given this excellence award for the project. The extensive explanations for the logic and commentary for the error-free code provide a comprehensive and efficient solution to the problem. So that was kind of cool. Anyway, since then, intro to artificial intelligence. Interesting class. I wouldn't call it particularly useful as it concerns artificial intelligence. We built a chatbot, and then there was a second one that was to program a robot to perform generically defined uh, set of tasks or task, I guess. Really, there wasn't a whole lot of specification in what the project was supposed to do. It was just sort of start here, make it do a little bit more than that. I went a little bit overboard with it. My daughter got involved. She started coming and watching because you could program the robot. You could add all sorts of little sensors and parts to it, and then you could tell it what to do, basically, and hit play and watch it all play out in the simulated environment. And uh, my daughter ended up spending a lot of time in my office watching me do that, just watching a little robot wander around. And so I ended up making it a little bit crazy, so just for her entertainment and mine. So yeah, that was uh, an interesting class. It, it could have been a really long class, could have taken a really long time if the actual assessments had covered more of the course material as it stood. There were some 25 odd chapters in the book and that was the one class that I didn't really go through the book on. I, I skipped to the chapters that were relevant to the assessments and just knocked it out because it was clear to me that that class could have taken months if I had been as thorough about it as I have been about every other class, and it just wasn't necessary to pass it. After that was uh, the Oracle SQL certification, which was a tough certification. That was the hardest of the certification courses that I've taken uh, in the WGU curriculum. This was the Oracle Associate exam. There's another level above this. I guess they call it the Oracle uh, Professional or expert or something, I'm not sure. Either way, this was the associate exam, which is a, it's a tough exam. Next was operating systems for programmers, sort of a throwback to computer architecture. A lot of those low level concepts, uh, not as much the assembly language, or machine language type stuff, but the step above that, the kernels, the interaction between the application software and the operating system, the operating system and the computer itself. Interesting class, a lot of overlap with stuff that we had already been working on, which uh, you would expect at this point, not terribly difficult. After that one, business of IT. This is the ITIL certification, and it's the the first certification in ITIL. ITIL, like a framework for structuring the processes of the IT department, something like that. It's an alternative sort of to uh, Six Sigma. This class was kind of ridiculous. This is really a certification to begin getting certified within this particular framework of certifications. It's like a multi-year curriculum. Come on, come get certified. Now get certified again. Now get certified again. Get certified again and again and again and again and again. You gotta have like 25 credits or something before you reach their actual certification level where you're certified in like knowing enough to actually be able to manage an IT department according to their principles. I don't know. I don't know. 
whatever. The test was about learning a bunch of concepts as defined by the ITIL organization that could have been defined equally validly in other ways by other companies or other groups or whatever. It's just not terribly useful. I didn't get much out of that class. I'm not sure that many people do. Got through it. After that was software engineering. And then following software engineering was software quality assurance. And these two classes probably could have been rolled into one class. There was a lot of overlap in the course material. That said, the software engineering class, just as far as WGU's worked out course material and exam material goes, software engineering was the much better class. It was obviously laid out properly. The exam tested you properly. It was just a, it was a better put together course. Whereas the software quality assurance material didn't necessarily line up with the exam. You were being tested on things that were not being taught and questions that could be answered in multiple ways without any answer being any better than any other answer. The exam needs a lot of work, frankly. It needs to be reviewed and edited by actual subject matter experts. I get the feeling that the exam was created by someone who speaks English as a second language and who didn't really know what they were doing all that much. The actual course instructors don't have access to the exam. It's only the assessment uh, graders do or the assessment people within WGU and I, I don't know what the disconnect is there between the actual IT expertise in this exam but it, it just doesn't line up. That was actually the first exam that I did not pass on my first attempt. In order to pass an exam at WGU, you have to make it a, like a minimum of 70%, and I think I made about 65% on that. Decent opportunity anyway to talk to you about what happens whenever you fail an exam at WGU. First, you hang your head in shame because you learn about it really quickly right after you finish. You just kind of go, oh man, that sucks. Now you have ooh, four attempts that you can take. Uh, your first and your second are included in your cost. No, wait. And your third, I think. I guess I should look that up and let you know. I'll be right back. Okay, confirmed. If you do not pass an objective assessment on your first attempt, you got to get in touch with your course instructor, come up with some sort of a study plan to demonstrate that you're actually learning some material and are not going to just go in and try it again based on knowing a little bit about what the exam is going to be. Then they can approve you to retake it. There's no mandatory waiting period or anything. If you fail on the second attempt, there's a mandatory five-day waiting period before you can take a third attempt and you actually have to pay for the third attempt. So your first two are included. If you don't pass on either of those first two, there's a $60 retake fee for a WGU exam. If it's a certification exam, uh, it's a heftier retake fee, I believe, because you actually have to pay the cost of the certification. So WGU is providing you vouchers that are Included with your tuition for the first two attempts. If you don't pass on either of those, then uh, it's on you. You can take up to four attempts. If you do not pass on your fourth attempt, they won't let you finish the program. You either you're out of school or you've got to switch to a program that does not include that class because you're not going to pass it. But anyway, I took the exam the first time in the middle of the night. I believe it was early uh, Saturday morning, so I wasn't able to get in touch with the course instructor right away. So. I went through the entire course curriculum and took every little intermediate exams that you can take. They're not for credit, but just sort of to, to demonstrate or, or check your mastery of the material. And I went through and scored 95 to 100% on all of those. By the time that I got in touch with the course instructor over it, I had already been through everything. He was able to look into my file and see like, okay, well, you've made all these excellent grades on all these other exams and everything. So he just said, look, I'm going to go ahead and approve you. You can take it whenever you want. And then he sent me a few extra little resources that the course instructors for uh, that class had put together just based on their understanding of the suboptimal examination material. And it was helpful. Then I took the exam again around 3, 4, 5 a.m. or something the next morning after I got that material from him. So about two-ish days later after the first attempt and passed it not even that strongly. Somewhere around 78, 79%. It's just a bad exam. So if anybody out there is failing that one or struggling with that one, understand it's probably not your fault. It's just a bad exam. It really needs work. I hope that WGU addresses that. If they would allow the course instructors to provide some input, I think that it would be taken care of right now. So I finished that class August 19th. I had been counting on this 30-day extension for a while, so I had gotten my uh, program mentor to enroll me in the capstone course on August 13th or 14th because you had to be in it two weeks before the end of the term, and then it had to be the only class that you had left by the 25th. So 
I finished software quality assurance class on the 19th and then we submit the request for it and everything it was all granted and so now I've got until September 30th to finish my capstone project and successfully have completed a computer science bachelor's degree in a single term for what that's worth. So the capstone, I'll tell you a little bit about that. There are two submissions that you make for the capstone. One of them I already made and passed and that's basically just approval for your topic. Everybody's topic, the whole process of coming up with it is kind of part of the capstone process, but here's the uh, just some instructions. This is not the official grading guide rubric like they normally give you. This is just a, a guide that one of the instructors for the capstone put together. The basis of this thing is that it's in sort of the scenario that you're supposed to create for yourself. You are building software for a business that provides the business with some sort of actionable data. The way they kind of lay it out for you, they tell you to go and find a data set through Kaggle or through some government database or whatever where you're actually finding some data set that relates to something and then you come up with a scenario where you use that data set apply some kind of ideally a machine learning type of algorithm to it and generate some new actionable future centric information out of this data i am doing my project on data that we have kind of in-house here it's our online business to generate some useful data, uh, hopefully something that will help us increase our sales. We'll see how that goes. I really haven't started on the actual application yet, but it's supposed to be a fully functional application. I'm going to build a web app out of it, which will be the first full web application that I've built since I started this program, which is strange to me. If I was in like a boot camp, web apps would be the focus. It's one of those things that you got to consider, I guess, whenever you're thinking about should I go and get a degree or should I go into a boot camp? Because it's a six month term, it's actually a whole lot less expensive for me than any of the boot camps I could have gone into. And, and you get the college degree out of it, which I think is useful. I think it's sort of a, a universal aspect of college. Obviously in a computer science program you learn a lot of theory. So you end up with a, a really good understanding of computer science but without a whole lot of hands-on practical experience without doing things on your own. Now, yeah, we had projects. There were multiple projects, multiple applications that I built, but they were all native applications. Two big Java projects, there was a C++ project and a couple of Python projects, but all of them run on your own machine and there actually hasn't been a single instance in the program where you were supposed to create an installer so that you could distribute the software easily. There are some elements that are lacking in this program. I'd like to there to have been a couple of classes where the assessment involved actually launching web applications. Things that are directly and immediately useful and applicable to industry work today for somebody who is uh, supposed to be knowledgeable about coding. But I guess the opportunity to do that is the capstone program. And so that's what I'm gonna do. The unfortunate part is that there's no real guidance as far as learning it. You know, they don't give you a curriculum for that. Uh, you do have access to a pretty massive library through their EBSCO host thing. And so I've got eBooks that I've found that I'm kind of working my way through. In addition to that, you've got access to Linda or, or LinkedIn Learning, I guess it is now, or Pluralsight. There are several different learning platforms where you can get some information that WGU directly provides you access to. So there's all sorts of resources you have, but it would have been nice to have a class that was actually focused on how you create a functional web application. But that's where I am. Oh yeah, check this out. This shirt was cool. It's a little light fleece sweater that I got basically for free. You pay for shipping. It was a thing where if you refer a friend to talk with the WGU enrollment counselor, they would give you 30 bucks credit to their online store. So I did and I got this pretty nice little fleece that I actually use on a regular basis, which is cool. And let's see, what else? I probably don't sound as tired this time as I did the last time I made a video. I have for the last two months basically been on my schedule of sleep one night, don't sleep the next night. Sleep one night, don't sleep the next night. It worked for me to get the program done. I regret it not quite finished yet, but I'm relatively confident that I, that I will have this done by the end of the month. I don't recommend it. I do not recommend it. My body has taken a beating from it. That and the lack of exercise because of focusing on school all day. It's been, it's been rough. The last time I was letting the hair grow in my face, I had maybe one gray hair that I could find. I actually pulled it out because it stuck out to me and now I've got too many to count. I don't know how much of that is due to not sleeping half of the days over two months, but I, I gotta figure there's some 
contribution there. I don't know how many years I took off my life finishing this degree program, but if it was less than three, I guess it's worth it because uh, I'm not spending three more years in school to get this degree anyway. So what's up now? The capstone, obviously I gotta get that done. This month I've got a lot of things on my plate. Uh, I've spent the last few days fixing cars, bought a new car. Eh, I wouldn't call it new. I like Toyotas and I like old reliable things. I like making things work and that's why I'm in this computer science program is because I really enjoy machines and I really enjoy making machines work and part of that for me is working on cars. I drive a 2004 Tacoma that I got new and as of today it's got close to 330,000 miles on it and I fully expect to drive it until it reaches at least 450 or half a million. And then whenever it dies I just want to find another one just like it with maybe 200,000 on it and then have give it another go. My wife had been driving an older vehicle that only had about 50,000 miles on it, but an American-made vehicle. So I went ahead and bought her a uh, Toyota, something that uh, needs a little bit of work, but it's some body work and stuff that I will be doing myself and stuff that I enjoy doing. So moving around the middle of the month, dogs having surgery today. I'll be leaving in about an hour to take her to the vet for that. Hoping that it's not cancer, but it's a big, uh, big mass she's got to have removed. She's a 12-year-old lab I've had since she was about eight weeks old. Quick, sad update on that. It is, in fact, cancer. Uh, it's very advanced. The doctor was not comfortable doing surgery, putting her under anesthesia. So... We are just trying to make her as comfortable as we can in the time she has left. This is my girl, constant companion for the last 12 years. And uh, that's the reason that it took me a few days to get this video up after I recorded it. I guess that's all for now. I will update you guys when I am done with this program. I'll be in a different place, but it won't make any difference to you. You'll see me right here. Peace.